Hey up folks, I'm Matt Godfrey and I'm here at Makings Fishery on Lake Five today to give you a few tips and tricks about one of my favourite kinds of fishing, silverfish on commercials in the late winter and early spring. One of the most common questions I get asked about this style of fishing is where do you actually go about fishing? Because you arrive at your peg and you've got a lot of different options. And for me, there's two main ones. The first is a close in line. A lot of commercial silvers like to patrol and hang around the bottom of the first shelf, which is lovely because you can have a nice day's fishing close to you, nice and comfortable. Don't even matter if it's windy, still enjoy some action. And for me, the most important thing about that line is finding the bottom of that shelf. So I simply put my plummet on, ship out, and you'll gradually see the slope getting deeper and deeper until you find the main lake bed where it'll flatten out. And for me, that's the perfect place to target on your short line. Feeding and bait wise for my short line, I always like to kick off with a big pot, 300 mil of loose ground bait. And when I say loose, I mean I'm not actually making it into a ball. I simply gather it up and push it into my pole pot like a big sand castle. And that's got in it a nice helping of casters, some cell, two mil pellets, and a few dead pinkies as well, just to create a base. And the reason for putting it in loose is that it'll go down and spread out of a quite a big area. So you've got a big cloud, a lot of attraction, and it'll land in a feeding zone on the bottom. If you feed a ball, it tends to land in a little tiny area and there's not a lot of attraction and space for fish to gather. So a big pot of loose at the start also will settle nicely if you're just coming up that slope a little bit. And after that's gone in, I simply loose feed a few casters there by hand, nice and accurately around your flow, keep a bit of bait falling through the water, and you'll often find the best time to fish the close in line is in the latter half of a session when them fish have moved in out the middle of the lake, they're coming in looking for food, you can catch some big weights short in the last hour. The next area of your swim to target for me on this kind of venue is open water, out in the middle of that lake, which is where a lot of fish live, especially in the evening and night time. I think they back off, get huddled in the middle of the lake, and early in the session when you're starting, they're still out there, and that's where they'll move in from. So starting on a longer pole line, out in open water, is a good ploy. There's two different ways that I like to attack the longer pole line, and that depends very much on temperature and weather. Now, if it's freezing cold, as a general rule, there's frost on the ground, four or five degrees, very wintry conditions. I feel like baits like maggots, casters, pinkies, fished on top of ground bait is very effective because you catch a wider range of species, some roach, smaller skimmers and things. You'll get them in your peg first with the attractiveness of ground bait and maggots, and hopefully bigger fish, your bream and bigger skimmers will follow. However, when it is mild, I'm talking no frost, a nice warm breeze, then milder spring mornings, pellets can be absolutely deadly. Bream and commercial skimmers absolutely love pellets. And for me, feeding micros with a little bit of crushed expander and fishing expander pellets on the hook is deadly. So on that long pole line, I like to look at the weather and make my decision on the day, either pellets or ground bait and maggots. In terms of how to actually feed the long pole line when using ground bait and maggots, it's very similar to the shorter swim. I like to feed loose ground bait, but a little bit more. Often it's deeper out there. You've got a lot more water to pull fish from. So rather than put one big pot of loose ground bait with some micras, casters, and dead pinkies in, I'll put two big full ones. Again, nicely packed in, loose, not squeezed in a ball, so it lands on top of any silt that's out there, and you get that nice grazing area and then I'll often ping five or six maggots over the top regular, just to create a little bit of noise, something falling through the water to bring fish in on them harder, colder days when you're using ground bait and maggots. How I actually like to feed when I'm fishing with pellets on them milder days on the long line is quite interesting. I like to use a combo of ground bait and some micros. Now the ground bait, which is 100% pure ground expander, 
is very important. It's nice and fluffy and it pops off and fizzes a little bit, leaves a little trail in the water column. And for me, that's great for getting fish into your peg in the first place. A lot more attractive than simply tapping in a few micro pellets. So to kick off, a nugget, a little bit smaller than a golf ball, lightly squeezed of pure ground expander with around 50 micros. Not a lot of bait, but the thing with pellets is I'm going to have a little pot on the end of my pole and every time I ship out, I'm going to put in a little thumbnail amount of micros, probably 20 or 30 of them, and just cap it off with that little bit of pure ground expander. So you've got the attractive little fluffy nature of the crushed ground bait going through the water column with them few micros going to the bottom and pinning them fish where you want them. Lovely little feeding combo. So what's on the menu for commercial silvers in the winter and early spring? First thing to get right is your ground bait mix. When you're feeding baits like maggots, casters, chop worms in ground bait, you've got to have one that fish are happy to come over and feed on. And for me, Sweet Marine is exactly that. Designed just for that job, F1 skimmers, winter silvers on commercials, they absolutely love it. I've caught so many fish on it this winter. It's a dark mix that's got a combo of cereal, sweeter ingredients and an edge to it, as well as them all important high quality fish meals, crushed pellets, various kinds of them. Fish just absolutely love it. And the nice thing about this time of year is you don't need absolutely loads of it. A two kilo bag that it comes in will probably last you a couple of sessions easily. Next up is a 100% pure ground expander. And again, I'm not feeding loads of this, just a little nugget to start with and then a little bit on the top of my pot just to hold my pellets in to offer that fluffy attraction. When you put this ground bait in the edge, have a little look, you can see bits popping off it. It makes a nice trail in the water and it's brilliant to feed in conjunction with some micro pellets just to give everything that extra attraction. The water's still clear in the late winter, early spring, so you need something to bring them fish into your peg initially. A couple of pints of it, as you can see I've got there, is ample for a session. Lovely and fluffy. Pure ground expanders, not a lot of feed in there. Fish absolutely love them. Next, the actual micro pellets themselves. I've got some two mil cell pellets. I like the cell flavor, especially in winter because it's quite sweet and it just gives me that little added extra to what other anglers are using. Lovely and soft, soak them last night. So they soft throughout, break down and easy to digest by fish. Skimmers love them and again, don't need absolutely loads of them. I've got less than a pint for today. I'm gonna to feed probably 50 to kick off and then a few in a little pole mount of pot topped off with my pure ground expander. Finally, the hook bait to fish on top of my pellets and that's simple four mil neutral expander pellets for me. The only thing I have done is I've put a little squirt of the yellow pineapple captivate dye on just cause I think skimmers love that little flash of yellow. I remember as a kid, I had some quite vivid yellow expander pellets. Don't know where they are now, you don't seem to get them anymore, but skimmers used to absolutely love them. And I've started putting a little bit of yellow on my expanders, gives them a little sweet edge as well. You know what, caught loads of fish on it. I like to keep rigs for commercial silvers nice and simple. I only use a couple of different kinds, different shotting patterns, but the main line, hook length and elastic are the same on both of them. That's a number six slip elastic, Main line's 013 engage, pretty stiff for silverfish, but you're often catching a lot of fish in and out regular, so you need something that's durable and won't tangle. And I know 13's a perfect balance for me. The float for the strung out rig, which I'm gonna to talk to you about first, is a 0.3 gram Mick Wilkinson Slim, and that's got a wire stem. Now the reason for wire is because in winter, often it's windy, lakes might be towing, and I just like the extra stability that wire offers. It's got a nice visible hollow plastic tip. I can dot it right down, but still see it easily. So I can read the indications and little dinks off silvers are often all you'll get. So you need something you can see, but dot nice and low to the water. Moving down to the shotting pattern. Now this is where both rigs really differ. They've got everything the same other than the shots. I've got a strung out pattern in the bottom half of the rig. And there I've got four number 10 shot, about three and a half inch apart. And then the bottom four nearest the hook, still staying four inches, three and a half inches apart, a number 11. So that rig will fall nice and slow through the water. And it comes into play for me in clear water when fish are watching a bait fall in. They're a little bit wary, especially in winter when it is clear. 
and also when you're loose feeding bait so your hook bait will fall nice and slow the same as that loose feed great way of presenting a bait and the hook length again it's the same on both rigs is six inch long it's 010 engage pro and i've got an 18 f1 pellet hook on there so that's the strung art rig as you've seen them strung shots nice slow fall clear water lovely kind of presentation the next one is to give me a little bit of extra stability on windy days or when you're fishing out in that open water you sometimes need to hold that float nice and still and accurately on top of your bait so i've got a little bit heavier float on this one the same elastic same lines but that's a 0.4 gram version of the same wire slim float and then shotting wise where this differs is i've got a bulk of number 10 shot about 15 inches from the hook and then i've got two number 10 droppers so as you can see all that weight's condensed into the bottom part of the rig which allows me to hold that bait nice and stable and securely on top of my feed same hook length six inches o10 engage pro and an 18 hook but for me i've got the strung out rig falling through the water nice and slow and i've got the bulk down rig so two different rigs that offer two different kinds of presentation that each have a day when they'll be effective accuracy is probably the area of fishing that i see people go wrong the most in and the strange thing is we've all got access to pole pots the right catapults and we all put so much effort into getting our rigs and bait and feeding correct but then if you're not accurate and you're not fishing on top of that bait or in the right area you're not making the most of all that extra effort that you're putting in so for me accuracy is right up there with every other aspect of fishing and for winter and springtime silvers definitely important because you don't always want to be fishing right on top of your bait sometimes you might want to fish just past down tow but the important thing is you know exactly where it is so the first thing for me is making sure that your cupping kit that you're feeding your bait with and your top kits that you're fishing with are exactly the same length as you can see there both of mine teed up at the back end and I am fishing bang on top of that bait when I put it in the perfect length really really important the next thing when you're fishing with baits like pellets and you've got a pole mounted pot on the end of your pole you've got to make sure it's not too far from the end if it's six and eight inches back here you often see anglers with pole pots right back down the pole you simply can't be accurate enough I want mine inch and a half two inch from the end of my pole you've only got a little pot on at this time of year so it doesn't affect the stiffness of it and then you can drip that little bit of bait in them few pellets bit of ground bait and fish bang on top of it but of course it's not just about accuracy lengthwise you've also got to pick a marker on that far bank that you can line up with so take that extra effort especially at the start when you're potting your initial bait in that bait that i've potted in at the start might not feed it again all day them two pots of loose ground bait that could be all i'm going to feed so i need to know it's going in exactly the right place so when you plumb up pick a marker and then you can feed your bait throughout the session bang in line today i've got a nice clear one there's a big green bush opposite and a nice light patch of light leaves right next to the water that i'm not going to lose sight of clear marker i can feed all my bait in line with that another area where you can miss out on being accurate is actually when you're shipping your pole out and by that i mean where your pole is in relation to your elbow so for example i might ship out put my rig and bait in just here for a bit but might get a bit lazy as a session progresses and all of a sudden i'll drift back a little bit or lean out a little bit further just taking note of where your elbow is on your pole section could easily maneuver you a foot 18 inches if you're not concentrating and taking care so make sure your elbow's in the right place on your pole section when you're feeding your bait and when you're presenting your rig now the final thing I want to talk to you about in terms of accuracy i touched on it earlier is you haven't always got a fish bang on top of your feed you've got to know exactly where that feed is however for example in winter especially early on in a session fish often hang about off the back edge of your feed they know that bait's there but the water's cold they're a little bit wary of it there's a big bed of ground bait suddenly appeared on the bottom could be food but you can imagine them just hanging back off that back edge so flicking your rig out past the back of that bait can be a brilliant little trick in the winter months especially earlier in the session another thing that can affect bait and where it is on the bottom 
is tow in a lake. So if it's breezy, you often get a lake towing one way or the other as that circulation of water starts happening down there. And again, that'll make your bait drift away. When you're loose feeding, light particles, maggots and casters often drift further than a hard ball of ground bait. And by the same token, pot of loose ground bait, like we've fed today, will also drift a little bit further. So often, trying to present your rig a little bit further down tow where that bait might be landing compared to your marker could be really, really important. But coming back to it again, the main thing is your pole pots are the same length, your positioning on your end of the elbow is the same length, and you've got a clear marker on the far bank. So you know where your bait is, you can then work around it to get the most out of your peg. The old short line has come brilliant at the end. Look at that, a few of them lined up now. And like I mentioned earlier, often it is them later stages, as that light starts to drop, them bigger fish moving on that inside shelf, and the number of matches you can catch, 15, 20 pound of big silvers, that last hour closing, I've seen it done loads, but you know what? I'm gonna stay until it goes dark and I'll see you guys a bit later.